my wife Kalyani and I were planning to come to Roorkee for this meeting, but we could not do so on account of a minor accident. We were very keen on coming to this meeting for more reasons than one. First, I wanted to be with my young colleagues, Prabhindra Kumar, Shaina Tomar, and Ashwini Kumar Sharma when they are for the first time organizing a major meeting at Ruhi. Secondly, I understood that this occasion will be used to honor my colleague Professor T.P. Tejpal Singh and we didn't want to miss it. Thirdly, I also wanted to be with my friends and colleagues from India and abroad. I have known Tejpal for the last 43 years. He joined me in 1971 as a PhD student soon after I returned from Oxford. However, my, uh, my consciousness of him being my student has almost disappeared. It is only a historical fact. For me, for the last de few decades, he has been a close colleague, dear friend and a benefactor. Tejpal has had a somewhat unconventional career. Unlike most others who go for postdoctoral work abroad after finishing the PhD, Tejpal worked his way through the university system. First at the University of Indo, then at the Sardar Patel University. In between, he also completed his postdoctoral work in Germany. It is when he was at the Sardar Patel University that he met and married Meera. We have had the pleasure of knowing well Meera and their daughter Vinita as well. Now, most of his career, Tejpal spent at the All India Institute of Medical Sciences. The breadth and depth of his endeavors have been enormous. At present, he is undoubtedly the most prolific structural biologist in the country. He is also among the most prolific biologists in India. And he is much else. In addition, he has also been an outstanding leader uh, and uh, a very kind person. He, he's, I admire his courage and he has been loyal to a fault. And for me, he is an extremely loyal and I owe him a debt of gratitude. The illustrious career of Tejpal in some sense represents the current state of science in India. India and Indian science is now going through an exciting phase. When I was young, the situation of India, the condition of India used to be described as sheep to mouth existence. We did not produce enough food to feed ourselves. Then we used to import the American surplus wheat through ships. And this, not only in, the, in terms of food items, India was scarce in many other commodities as well. And when you, have, when you go abroad, we become all the more aware of the underdeveloped state of your country. That is what happened to me when I was in Oxford uh, to work with Dorothy Hodgkin in the, uh, in the late 60s and the early 70s. Many people, different people reacted differently to this condition. Many of us came back to India with fire in our belly, determined to contribute whatever we can to the development of India. All that has changed now. The Green Revolution 
put India back on her feet. And the contribution of science and technology to the development of India is much greater than what is normally believed. I already referred to the Green Revolution. Then our strength in generic drafts is based on the Indian competence in synthetic organic chemistry. Although the concentration is on service, the IT sector has done India proud. The biotechnology, biotechnology in India is in the process of take-off. And now, as we know, an Indian, air, an Indian spacecraft is orbiting Mars. I can list many more achievements. By and large, Indian science have done reasonably well. I am conscious there are many lacunae, many weaknesses and many things that need to be rectified. But yet, the outlook is very positive. So when I come to, when I talk about Indian science, structural biology, particularly macromolecular crystallography is an important component of the scientific effort in the country. We made the initial steps uh, towards establishing macromolecular crystallography in India in the 1970s after I returned from Oxford. And, we, and the area took off the ground in the 80s and came of age at the turn of the century. Now, macromolecular crystallography is spread throughout the country in dozens of institutions. My students, postdocs, their descendants and many others who have been trained in other laboratories in India and abroad have done India proud. Um, the, of course we should have done still better, but at present we have a very out, excellent platform from which we can take off to the next higher stage. Now by way of conclusion, I would again like to welcome all the participants of this meeting, particularly our colleagues from abroad. I wish the young colleagues in Roorkee well. Kalyani and I wish to uh, uh, wish Tejpal, Meera and Vineet, Vineeta all the best in the future. Now let me again reiterate that we are going through an exciting phase in the history of India and Indian science. There are difficulties, there are problems which need to be rectified. But still, there is a spring in our steps and hope in our hearts. I wish you well.